you know, our organization and how our programs work and how we work with volunteers and who is part of Latam Startups in general. Uh, so if you have questions, uh, you know, once I finish presentation or while I'm, uh, you know, uh, doing the presentation, you can actually uh, let us, uh, let me know and put it in the chat or open your microphone. This is very, very informal. Uh, I don't like to be the only one here uh, talking. Today is supposed to be our marketing coordinator, uh, you know, doing the info session, but unfortunately she has some problems entering to the room. Uh, so I will do it today. My name is Miriam Lazarte. I'm the CEO of Latam Startups. And uh, right now you are looking to our uh, website and I'm going to start talking about Latam Startups from the beginning, uh, from who we are, and then talking about the programs, talking about our community and how we uh, partner with different people. And uh, yeah, uh, you can open for questions anytime. I am uh, aiming to finish this uh, conversation with everyone at 12.30. Uh, so it's not going to take extremely long uh, for you guys to know about us. Uh, so first of all, let me tell you that Latam Startups is a nonprofit uh, organization based in Toronto. We are supported by the city of Toronto um, and uh, also part of the Startup Visa program, uh, which is a federal program that uh, is supporting international startups to move to Canada and to, or maybe have second headquarters in Canada and um, have their companies here. Uh, we are also part of NACO, uh, members of NACO, which is the National Angel Capital Organization. And uh, we, um, we love to uh, be a part of this community as, uh, you know, this community provides a lot of link uh, with different investors and also, you know, different type of events and connections uh, for our community. Uh, so first of all, I will go uh, through uh, our website because I believe that you guys are going to find a lot of information in our website and it's important for you to, uh, to know how we uh, you know, post things in the website and how you can interact with us in general. So first of all, uh, I would like to highlight, uh, we have a strong uh, board of directors, uh, people that really uh, have helped us uh, during all these years uh, in the ecosystem. We started um, in 2014, but as a nonprofit, we uh, actually incorporated in 2016. Uh, that was the end of 2016. And uh, from 2017, we started to receive international status in Canada. And since then to, uh, to now, uh, we have had 100 startups, uh, more than 100 startups through the different programs we have offered in LATAM startups. So this is our board of directors. Uh, if you see here, uh, Valerie Fox, uh, she was the person who created the MC Ryerson. And uh, you know, that's, that's the number one business incubator link with university in the world. Uh, we have Peter Elkins, Marco Schrager, uh, are investors. Uh, one is in Vancouver, the other is in Chile. And one is, um, Marcos in particular is focusing in biotechnology. Uh, Rafael Pinto, was a, uh, a professional uh, that lives in Brazil. Uh, he used to work with the American state organizations in Washington, has different links through Latin America, through different governments. Catherine Rose, who has uh, a lot of experience in incubators and accelerators. And uh, you know, she, she has worked with Enterprise Toronto and some other many organizations. And she has helped uh, over 20 years helping uh, startups to um, you know, shape their, their business model. Uh, Michael Kennedy, who works with CIBC. This is uh, one of the biggest banks that we have in Canada. He is also focusing in investment and uh, different type of portfolios uh, of uh, startups. Um, so this is our team right now. Uh, so here I am, uh, Miriam, uh, I'm the CEO of Latam Startups. Luisa is our project manager. She works with the startups in phase one and phase two. These are the phases that uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the phases, but this is basically, uh, you know, when startups come into uh, um, market validation and market entry programs. Uh, Gabi, that's supposed to be here now, she's the marketing coordinator, and she usually does these info sessions as well. Uh, she managed the marketing for uh, Latam Startups. Jordana is our administrative assistant, and Rachel, uh, she works with the corporate and um, uh, basically the business programs that, that are a little bit more advanced, like a visa program and all. 
And uh, you also find here some of our uh, mentors uh, for the programs. Uh, so when startups come to our programs, they actually deal with different type of mentors uh, from immigration to incorporation to uh, uh, you know, communication skills to other business models, angel investment, um, financial uh, projections, um, sales skills, uh, you know, corporate skills. There are different, uh, different type of mentors in our community that are helping startups to better shape uh, their own companies. Uh, now, these mentors in particular, uh, they have a lot of experience in their own field. Uh, they either have their own companies or they work for companies that uh, you know, manage uh, their particular vertical that they uh, basically help uh, uh, the startups that are in our community. So this is basically, uh, you know, what is our community in general in terms of the people that are surrounded in the community. We currently are uh, working to hire another three people that are being, going to be working with us in customer experience, uh, marketing for the startups and market research. And so we are in that transition to add another three people. And we believe that at the end of the year, we are going to be 11 full-time uh, people as a team uh, as we are adding more uh, you know, projects and more, uh, more people in, in our programs. So that's basically, uh, you know, our community. Uh, one thing that I want to say is that we started in 2014 as an international uh, incubator accelerator um, uh, with the intention to help international status because uh, as you can see pretty much in our core member team is that we are most of us immigrants, we are newcomers. We understand, uh, you know, where startups come from, uh, the difficulties to enter to this market, uh, why they are doing what they are doing. So um, our focus hasn't been in Canadian status per se, at least they want to go abroad, but our focus mainly has been always helping international startups. And we really want them to be successful in, uh, in not just in Canada, but you know, in general. So I'm going to jump into the programs, but if anyone has any questions about our community and different positions we have right now, please go ahead and put it in the uh, chat message or you can open your microphone. Um, no mind to be interrupted at any time. So here are the programs that we have. Basically, we have uh, three different programs in the startup, uh, in the startup vertical. So the first program is the Scala Bootcamp program which is the market validation program. Uh, this program goes for uh, two weeks and startups that enter into this program basically are because they already uh, have some traction in the market in their own home countries. And they feel like uh, this is a good time for uh, them uh, to jump into different markets. Uh, they are growing exponentially perhaps uh, at home. And then uh, they are looking into uh, entering new markets. And um, if you have any questions regarding why somebody will do that in, in a pandemic situation, well, uh, we actually work with technology companies and you know, all of them have uh, IP at this point. They, they have intellectual property. They have been growing in their own markets. And it's because this technology, um, basically kind of the pandemic has helped them a little bit because many people have, uh, have gone online or are acquiring new technologies in order to be more efficient right now at work and in their own lives. So uh, this is why uh, we feel like, uh, for example, last year we grow uh, a, a lot because we had a lot of companies that uh, you know uh, are coming right now to Canada because they are feeling like they are growing and you know in their home countries. Now, one particular thing that I wanted to say here is that. Um, these international startups that are coming uh, it used to be that our uh, main community comes from Latin America. <laughs> this is not the case anymore since last year, and this year certainly is not the case. We have many uh, companies actually coming from India, uh, Hong Kong, Pakistan, and different other uh, countries around the world, uh, and we are very glad to have uh, diversity in our community. Uh, from the companies that actually we have from Latin America, I will say mainly uh, companies are coming either from Brazil or Mexico is, is where uh, they are dominating right now, you know, in regards of where country is. 
But in regards of technology, it can be any technology that has intellectual property for us uh, and that is kind of having already some traction locally in order to become a part of the programs. So that's very important for us. But if you go, let's say, to the link to the Scala Bootcamp program, uh, you will find out uh, that, uh, you know, uh, you have information there about how the program works. And of course, th there is a short video there, but you can actually have a brochure that you can download, uh, you know, and then uh, you can find more information about the program. Usually startups uh, come with about five co-founders. Uh, two of them are co-founders, uh, you know, that normally will come in person. Uh, but since the pandemic, we have been able to adapt everything in online basis. So most of the time we have uh, startups that are coming with different co-founders to the, the boot camps. And then, uh, you know, uh, for us, it's very important that they go through this criteria that uh, is a technology company uh, with intellectual property that is financially stable. Because Canada, guys, is very expensive. Uh, country in North America is very expensive. Uh, when they come just with an MVP and they don't know much about, uh, let's say, um, I don't know, they, 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 don't, they don't have enough funding to actually, uh, you know, put their companies here. We have seen in the past people failing in, in the intention to enter to the, to the country and then they are running out of money. Not saying that, uh, you know, Canada doesn't have funding for uh, for startups, uh, they, actually, we have a lot of funding in Canada for startups, but, uh, you know, it takes a while for startups to actually get adapted into the market and good enough to enter into uh, this particular uh, funding, uh, uh, you know, opportunities that we have. So it's very important that the company is financially stable. Uh, that is a coachable team, my goodness. We try to be uh, our best to advise these startups along with the mentors we have. Uh, so we are trying our best uh, also to make sure that they understand they have to, uh, you know, integrate their uh, companies in a structure. And of course, uh, you know, um, most of them when they enter to the program is because they are willing to relocate in Canada. We are not with the intention that they close their companies in, uh, in Latin America, but uh, we are in the intention that uh, they, they actually, you know, will have at least a second headquarters here. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, they have to have some English level proficiency because, uh, you know, all our mentors uh, basically uh, speak English and they need to understand what, what is happening around. So that's the basic criteria for our program in the first level. Uh, most of the companies, when they go to that level and finish the two weeks program, they realize if it's this, this is a really a uh, good timing uh, for them to uh, enter into, into Canada or uh, you know, North America at this point. Sometimes they realize this is not a good time uh, or they realize the competition is going to be too hard or they don't have the, enough funding. Whatever is the conclusion of the program actually help them to uh, do better uh, you know, in, their, uh, in the projection for, for that year or the following years. So our, um, our intention with this first part of the program is that they know uh, basically what are the biggest challenge and concerns they may have in order to enter uh, to a country because this is a big move, it's a bold move for most of the startups. Now, I'm going to continue to the second phase, which is the soft landing program. Soft landing program happens immediately after, uh, a, you know, Scala Bootcamp finishes. And then uh, soft landing program is more like a market entry program. When people enter to this program is because they feel like uh, in, I will say more than 80%, they are sure this is the market for them. And they, they are ready to make this move. They are ready to, uh, you know, put the necessary investment for them to move uh, or to have a second headquarters uh, here in Canada. The program goes for two months and a half. And then, uh, you know, the criteria is that they, they need to be completed the Scala Bootcamp program. Uh, go to, uh, you know, have, uh, of course, to have the intellectual property. And then um, I will say at the end of the program, uh, most of the startups have incorporated their companies in Canada. So we work with the companies in this stage, basically uh, into uh, uh, having different milestones for them to launch the company in the country and get ready for that part. So we usually finish the program 
with, a, uh, with an event uh, that we do. And you guys are going to see, we are going to launch very soon the eighth edition of LATAM Startups Conference, which is happening from May, from May uh, 25th to May 27th. And uh, you will see the companies that are passing through, you know, the, the first two stages, basically, or, or basically the second stage, uh, you know, pitching at, uh, at that event. Besides that, we always get, you know, different type of speakers and people that are interested in this link between Canada and Latin America in particular that, uh, you know, we are expecting for the future is going to be more like a global type of uh, uh, links. But for now, it keeps being majority Latin America. So, um, okay, uh, we finished with the uh, soft landing program. When people uh, or startups finish with the start uh, soft landing program, they are then eligible uh, to become a part of our startup visa program, which is an accelerator program. And uh, uh, they will be pitching our board of directors to enter into this program. Um, so when the board of directors accept them, uh, we give them the supporting letter to become a part of, uh, you know, the, the startup visa program. And they will start a four months, uh, well, I'm sorry, six months acceleration program. And in this case, um, you know, what we are looking forward is to start growing the network, uh, start growing, uh, you know, in sales and funding. Uh, so we pretty much put uh, all our efforts into uh, bring companies in, in here that really can successfully start selling or start getting funding. Um, now, this is not an easy step at all. Um, it's, it's a very difficult step. Sometimes, depending on the type of company, it takes months or sometimes years uh, to get into a stage where they feel like they are finally growing in North America. So we provide all the support available for them to uh, start growing in that path. Of course, uh, you know, uh, links with different investors, uh, links with different funding opportunities, um, but the core of the program from the beginning until the end is to get customers. That's what is important for us. That's what it should be the base for startups uh, from the beginning in our vision. Now, uh, in order to uh, startups to actually apply for the program, uh, each of the, uh, the links in the, in the program um, structure will have, uh, you know, the application process, uh, which is, uh, you know, pretty much simple. Right now we have a waiting list for March, 2021, because we have already selected the companies, but sometimes, you know, uh, happens that some companies cannot come uh, for any reason. Uh, and then we try to fill out those spaces when we see that, uh, you know, there is a waiting list and we kind of fill out the spaces. We uh, get in between four and five inquiries or applications per day from startups. As you can imagine, we have a lot of, uh, you know, demand uh, into international startups to, to enter to the program. But we have limitations in capacity from our team to actually uh, have the right startups in, into the program. So we select in between 15 to 20 companies every cohort. Um, this is going to change uh, in June uh, and on. Uh, we are expecting to uh, become rolling basis program because of the high demand uh, on international startups. But we are also expecting to have a better criteria and be improving, you know, the quality of the startups that we are getting into the program. Uh, if you want to know what type of startups we have into the program, uh, you can go to clients and you will see uh, some of the startups we have. In, well, these are not startups, these are corporations we have in the corporate program. I can talk about that too. And then we have the portfolio of a startup visa program and soft landing program in this link. So you guys can go there and you can actually open up uh, their, uh, you know, one pagers and you will see what the startups are uh, talking about, you know, what type of technology they are bringing here and, uh, it, you know, basically uh, what type of history they have in this one pager. Um, so if you're curious about that, I certainly uh, will ask you to, to go there. Um, uh, you can see here we have a corporate program. We do, and uh, we are basically right now here, we are in the center, of, um, in the Ontario Center of Innovation. They just recently changed the name for innovation. Uh, so this is the building 
Uh, basically, we have a bigger space for a status. Shame we cannot use the space all the time, but we are coming here once a week. Uh, uh, you know, as, as, as we are part of, uh, you know, uh, the research and innovation, we can use the, uh, the office space, but we are trying to manage also, uh, you know, best uh, way possible um, our staff and our startups in a way that we don't have a crowded space and uh, to, to meet the social distancing and all the COVID requirements that are, that, that are necessary in order to uh, get people here. Hopefully with the, um, this year, you know, restrictions are going to get better over the time and people will be accessing more uh, to, the, uh, to the space we have. But for now, uh, for startups that are entering phase one and two, they are basically coming in an in online basis, no, no in presence. Um, so the corporate program was designed for companies that were not looking forward to move uh, co-founders to Canada. And basically what they are looking is to build a team in Canada to become more competitive in their home countries, uh, either way, because they are you know, improving technology or because they are adapting technology sometimes can be companies in traditional sectors. And until now we just have technology so far, um, but it could be traditional sector companies that are implementing technology. And uh, what we do have is, uh, you know, we offer office space, we offer talent, uh, you know, the, we have a lot of links uh, with people that can be uh, basically become a part of, uh, of, the, of the teams uh, that they want to build in here. We are very proud to say that, you know, over 80% of our volunteers actually get a job after they volunteer with us. And just recently, since last year, we have been hiring and paying all our volunteers. Uh, so we are very proud that the community has grown at that point. And because we are a nonprofit organization, basically, whatever the companies pay is reinvested in the community. So we can hire more people and we can improve the programs. And that's how we work. So for the corporations, we offer also consulting services with, uh, you know, immigration, incorporation, with tax credits and accounting. Uh, of course, we work in the marketing strategy for them, either uh, for their home countries or in here, because we have different type of people that can work in those areas. Uh, we, uh, we give extra connections and of course, uh, we try to build community with them and events. So I think somebody put somebody, something in the chat. Uh, uh, Deli, do you want to open your microphone perhaps? Hi. Hello. Hi, Deli. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Uh, <laughs> just, just so I'm going to ask you something because yeah. um, I just started my co own company in my country about um, is teaching technology uh, mm -hmm. to kids about robotic, virtual reality, at uh, different courses. Um, my question is if it is possible to apply for the program with that kind of, of business? It depends, Deli. You have to have uh, intellectual property. That's important. If you own code or if you, uh, you, know, you have a patent over the technology that you are developing, then you can certainly be a part of that program. And that's a requirement from the, uh, from the government for the business incubators or accelerators that we have to have uh, you know, intellectual property and, and patent in between. Uh, if your goal is to get into a startup visa program, let's say. You know, if your goal is not to get into a visa program, then you can certainly be a part of any of the other programs. And, they, uh, and if you need to match it with some immigration options, there are some other immigration options available. It's just the most of the startups go for the startup visa. That, that's kind of their goal, but that's not the only option in the market. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's not my own code. It's, we are using in code, you know, programs uh, the that's already there. Just I mean, we are teaching because I saw uh, once uh, I think you in your in your experience uh, one company from Colombia they mm -hmm. uh, developed just yeah, some I, I think it's um, same as my uh, my company um, I just that's for this reason I was thinking maybe maybe it's applied so yeah we have two companies from Colombia that are actually yeah. uh, you know one of them for example uh, uh, 
they develop a solution for kids, uh, but they didn't have uh, intellectual property or patent. So they went to another immigration process, different uh, instead of visa program. And the other one that is called makers that also uh, work with kids in, in robotics, they actually have a patent over that. So they enter into the start of visa program. Uh, oh, yeah, so the best, the best thing that I can do for you uh, that I can advise you is that if you go to uh, the event section, okay, uh, mm -hmm. there is an event coming up, uh, which we are right now in the info session one, there is this event coming up, this Canada 101, uh, that basically gives information about immigration options, corporation options, and angel investment. And it's an event that is uh, three hours. So it's, it goes in different, in different sections you see here. Uh, so basically, uh, when you go in these different sections, you can, uh, you can actually ask questions about immigration or incorporation or angel investment. And we have our uh, our partners actually answering questions for for this part, uh, so it's, it's very complete and kind of give you probably answers for for what you want to do with your company. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, is uh, somebody's asking here, but I cannot see your name. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to put this in a different way. This is uh, see what is happening here. Okay. Um, I don't see your name. Uh, if somebody has men any other question at this point, you can you can actually unmute yourself. I can see somebody's uh, bring their hand. Hi, Miriam. This is Leo. Uh, from oh, Brazil. hey, Leo. How are you? Good. How about you? All good. All good. Nice to see you. Okay, so uh, I have a company. We're doing like online banking. Uh, mm -hmm. We're interested in the startup visa program. Uh, one question that I have is uh, regarding uh, confidentiality agreements and things like this. So before we join the program, um, would we get like a, a confidentiality agreement or how does that work? Yeah, uh, we actually take very serious that part because, you know, privacy here is a big thing. <laughs> so in between the uh, terms and conditions when people enter to the program, there is a confidentiality agreement. Uh, and like we go, we, we don't go deep into your code or how you do internally your technology. Uh, for business purposes, there is no much of confidentiality really. Like if you really want to sell, you need to talk about your business. Uh, so whatever you put in a business plan, you know, it's probably uh, public available for a certain amount of people, uh, but it's still under confidential matter uh, in between our team. I get it, thank you. And then another question that I have mm -hmm. is, uh, I have some partners in the business. Mm -hmm. Um, some are Brazilians and they, I may have also a Canadian partner uh, that I just met recently. So my question is, what is the minimum percentage that partners should have in order to apply to the Startup Visa program? Yeah, that's a very important question, Leo. Thank you for asking that. Uh, actually, you know, if you have up to five co-founders, each of them need to have 10% of the company. So as a minimum, it has to be 50% in between the five co-founders. Let's say if you are three co-founders, then that 50% needs to be divided between the co-founders. Doesn't have to be equal, you know, but mm -hmm. they have to have a minimum of 10%. Okay, that's good. And then after you're approved in the program, uh, how long it takes for you to get like the permission to travel to Canada and all of that? Well, that depends of the country. <laughs> and let's say... Uh, Usually, usually for Brazilians, Mexicans, and people from Chile, uh, they can travel to Canada basically with a permit and a stamp the work permit at the border. Uh, so that has been the situation until the days of the pandemic. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have a hundred percent answer for that because every single day we have different uh, changes in the restrictions. For example, just recently, the government added, you know, not just the 14 days quarantine, but people has to be in a hotel for three days. Uh, I, I believe for companies that are traveling right now or co-founders that are traveling right now, uh, they need to get an authorization from uh, the embassy to travel uh, and to get a COVID test before they travel. So in our side, yeah, we basically provide the paperwork, uh, you know, the, the supporting letter when, when it's time, when, you know, uh, the board of directors approve. Uh, but, uh, you know, if happens that it, it, for any type of restriction, 
um, internally, you know, the, the process of the work permit can take longer. Um, there, there are some countries uh, that they need to do this online and it, it can take up to six weeks to get the work permit. With Brazil, we are still like a, in a gray area because you guys have the second most COVID cases. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of like a, it's changing with the flow. That, again, uh, if you either enter or you get uh, approved to enter to a Scala Bootcamp program, or you know, if you go to this event, Canada 101, you can ask directly that question to our lawyer uh, and he will have a more better answer, more updated answer that today. I, I see the news every single day. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm trying to get updated as much as I can. And as I mentioned at the beginning, half of our community is Brazilian. So uh, we have a lot of people coming from Brazil, but you know, restriction has been something since last year. This year is getting easier in some ways, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I, will, I will ask my lawyer to that part. <laughs> and they do still have um spots available for uh, March or is something that is completely closed? It's not completely closed at this point. Uh, I believe there is one in startup or two that cannot come in March. Like the, the thing is that most of the startups that committed last year, they are, they are finishing, uh, you know, agreements and paperwork in this week. So we know this week how many spots we are going to have available. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it's possible that we have one or two available for, for March. Well, that's good. Uh, and then one final question. I have like a Portuguese passport. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay if I travel with that passport instead of the Brazilian one yeah. for you. Okay, yeah. that's good. Okay. It's, it's, awesome. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay. Uh, ba, uh, Bavia, uh, do you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, Actually, I came upon this company on uh, LinkedIn. So I just wanted to know more about this company. So what is the program they are offering and everything? So I just joined uh, to collect oh, some information. Okay. Yeah. And also I wanted to know about, I have seen in that some posting regarding the customer service and marketing. Yes, so, we are actually hiring people right now. So if you go to the, uh, the part in the website, um, right now in the website, I think this is the best part to, uh, for me to present to you guys because uh, you know how to navigate this then. Uh, there is a jobs uh, position available there. Uh, there are three jobs positions right now. There is market research, customer experience, and marketing assistant. Our project manager is actually uh, you know, doing interviews right now. So if you want to apply for any of these uh, jobs, just go to the link, you know, open here and you will see her email there. So yes. programs, here, here is her email and you can send the resume to her. And... Yeah, I have sent it, yeah. Okay, sounds yeah. good. So how long time it takes for me to, uh, to what, like hear from them? Yeah, how long it takes to select the person? Well, yeah. uh, our our biggest concern at this point is that the people we are going to be hiring uh, has to be committed with our community from March to December, at okay. least. Okay, so we are trying to make sure we select the right person that is going to be 100% committed with, with that part, especially because we are going into rolling basis changing in June. Uh, okay. So we have received over 100 resumes so far. Um, I think Luisa is trying her best to, <laughs> to put together the interviews. Uh, in particular, the marketing part, for example, is an interview that she does together with Gabby. Uh, so we are trying our best to accumulate, but uh, I'm pretty sure that she will get back to you soon. Okay, okay then, yeah. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions you guys have? I see here some in the chat. So Gianfranco, uh, you're asking, did you uh, company the startup until they successful with the, the funding? Well, Gianmarco, we do our best uh, to, uh, you know, um, look for funding for startups. But there is, there is a reality in Canada that is a little bit different from the US. Uh, and many people sometimes kind of uh, put together Canada and the US in the same pot. Uh, we are very different countries and uh, the U.S. may have more um, investor readiness. Uh, that doesn't mean that you go to the U.S. and you get the investor right away. Uh, it takes uh, some time, but what it makes a big difference and what I'm saying this right now 
is because Canada has a lot of grants and that's free money from the government, either federal government, provincial government, local government. There are for technology companies, there are over 100 grants available. And for investors in Canada, it doesn't make sense. You are going to them asking for money if you have an access to uh, the free money first. So it takes a while to actually get to investment ready type of a startup because you need to use all the resources that are around. And that may take some time. So, uh, I mean, people that have become a part of our community since 2017, uh, it's like a, I have 100 kids. They, 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 all, they all get a stick with the community and they are all together. Most of them, you know, uh, we keep in very, very good contact with them. Uh, when they are in start a visa program and they finish the program, we continue one year monitoring program. So we try to do our best to, uh, you know, to uh, meet with them as much as we can, uh, you know, with, with the startups. Uh, I have another question here um, about the IP. Uh, okay, this, this is a very good question, Mari, about uh, the IP part, because um, what happens is that for a startup visa program, what they are looking is for uh, startups that can grow exponentially and they can grow big. In order to do that, you have to have a good intellectual property. Uh, that means that trademark is not just enough. You need to have copyrights or uh, you know, a patents, depending on what is a product or a service that you are putting together. So the government is kind of strict into uh, you know, what type of uh, intellectual property you have. Uh, this is not just important for government purposes, but it's important also for investors investors are putting money on your company because you actually um, have a good intellectual property. There is no way that other startup will copy you exactly what you have. And you, even if that happens, you have the rights over that software or the rights over that patent of that product that you are making. So that makes it difficult for your company to claim once you are a big company or once you are growing big to claim that what you are doing is a copy of what they are doing. So that's why intellectual pro property is, is extremely important. And trademarks, you know, trademarks are good, but it's not like, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not enough, unfortunately, for, for startup visa purposes. Um, have another question here from Emma. Uh, when are the next day applying for a stage one? Uh, it's going to be uh, in June. Uh, so I believe we are going to be, uh, you know, you, you can apply any time in the waiting list and we will be placing you into, uh, in, into basically um, a, a program either in June, July or August, you know, because in June we will start enrolling basis. Uh, we cannot take more than 12 companies enrolling basis because again, for the capacity, it's very difficult. So once we, let's say, we get full with one of the groups, then we will place the company in the other, uh, in the other list. At this point, the, the companies, for example, that are in waiting list right now are waiting list for June, most of, most of them. But if we, open, if we open the one or two spots, then we will put them in, in March if they are ready for March. So that's, uh, that's how we're trying to work and, and to accommodate people into the program. Uh, so I'm not sure if anyone has any other questions, uh, but if you have questions, please, again, interrupt me and emit any time. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Um, I will finish up with the events that we do have. Uh, you know, we have these info sessions every single month, every uh, first Tuesday of the month, we will have this. Um, now, we have Canada 101 that is a good event coming up that is going to be answering um, questions about immigration incorporation and angel investment, how angel investment works here in Canada and uh, what they are looking for. And specifically during the pandemic, how things have been developed because uh, I'm pretty sure that all you guys have seen the impact of the pandemic in, their, in your own countries. Um, thanks God Canada you know, uh, has managed somehow uh, the situation, but you know, uh, it's important for us uh, uh, that, that you guys understand, you know, also the limitations that the ecosystem may have. Uh, Santosh, uh, you have a question. Do you accept companies who have just registered office in Canada, but having most of the operations? 
yeah, that's basically what happens. Santosh, <laughs> most of the time, the companies that come to us have already operations in other country. And when they come here, sometimes they, they haven't even opened a company in Canada. Uh, in some cases, we have companies that have opened uh, or incorporated in Canada already. But for us, the ideal case is when uh, you know they have already a market in, in their home country and they are uh, yet to open in Canada. The reason why is that um, you know if a company, for example, uh, has not opened yet in Canada, um, we can give them the best advice on how to structure the company uh, so they don't have to change it over the time when they are growing or if they are accepting to start a visa program. But certainly we have had companies that already have opened and, and they have their own countries. Not sure if anyone wants to open a microphone or open for questions. This is a good time to do it because I'm over the time already. <laughs> no more questions. Okay, guys. So Again, if you want to keep in contact with our community, please, uh, you know, you can join also our newsletter. We send a new uh, newsletter every other week with information about the ecosystem, the programs, opportunities to have jobs with us, opportunities to become a part of the, uh, uh, of the community in here. Uh, so if you want to be a part of that, you just have to add your email on this part. Um, if you are coming because uh, you know you think your company may be good for uh, the stage one of the program, then you can add yourself into the waiting list. And if you think you are not sure about you know uh, the company will be a good fit for first stage of the program and you still want to come to Canada, uh, you know with a company that is not technology related, I will say go to Canada 101 the event, and then you will find your answers on that part. I have to mention also, we have a YouTube channel. And if you go to YouTube and you actually look for LATAM startups, we have, we have content there from 2014, from investment to programs to uh, many, many other things. Um, have somebody else in the chat. Um, what is the recommended level of revenue for a company to be successful in the program? Okay, that depends on how many uh, co-founders are, for example, willing to move to Canada. Um, uh, we will say normally companies have around $200,000 in order to minimum cover, uh, let's say, three co-founders in a year. You have to have your salary, you have to have payroll, you have to have a lot of things. In, and believe me, companies can have a lot less than that. Um, maybe uh, we have applications for $25,000, $50,000. You may make it with that, but it, it's going to be uh, that co-founders are struggling and that, uh, you know, many times we've seen co-founders kind of, uh, you know, going into very stressful time no thinking clearly in how to build the company because they are in a stressful financial situation. And we certainly don't want anyone to pass through that. Um, and so uh, William said here, you mentioned that unlikely uh, the US, Canada has many grants offerings for tech company. Is there any central uh, repository where I can find information about grants? Yeah, there is actually, I don't have my cell phone right now here. <laughs> But if you go, there is an app that is called Canada Business. You can download that app and then you will see there that is a part that is about incorporating companies and funding companies and all that. It will give you per province what are the funding available and also a national level available funding. Uh, there is a lot, I will say that will be the main source. Um, yeah, and there are some independent sources also for uh, for funding, but you know that is a good start uh, for uh, companies to start looking for funding available in, in that regard, regards. Okay, um, any other question, guys? If you have any other question, let let me know. Hello, Miriam. Yes. Uh, Miriam, nice to meet you. This is Eduardo. Hi, Eduardo. Uh, I I got a question. I perfectly understand now the program and. Which, are, which is the scope for the different businesses. 
my company in Mexico doesn't have like per se like a technology uh, develop or um, IP or anything like that. We use a lot of technology because we're an e-commerce platform, but yeah. we are not like uh, nothing uh, super sophisticated, I would say. Yeah. Is there, is there like uh, something that can be useful in the first stage uh, or or in like another program from Latin startups or and, and the revenue that we have is like right uh, enough or, or more than what you mentioned. So um, is there something there or, or not? Yeah. Uh, and I will ask you very straightforward. This question is the intention of any of the co-founders to live in Canada. Uh, well, I'm going to say the answer question. I already live in Canada. Uh, you are already living in Canada. Yeah. Uh, okay, so there is the uh, the corporate program. I will say it will be the best for you. Even if you have co-founders that, let's say, they want to move, it's not just you and you have any other co-founders, there, the, there are some other alternatives for that. But uh, right now, we have a Mexican company in the corporate program, which is the uh, uh, is, is this one. Uh, actually, the guy is also, uh, his name is Eduardo. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he, he's actually coming this afternoon to the office. Uh, but this one is a customized program that, uh, where we can help the company in, in very specific millstone and stages. So this one doesn't go into a structure like the startup visa program or the, the other programs that are for startups. This is more like a design it uh, as per the necessity of the company to be introduced in the market and how to reach out community and customers and all that, we go into different milestones. So you can actually, uh, if this is something that, that may help you, you can try to apply for this program. There is no minimum time. Uh, there is a minimum time of three months, but it's not a maximum time. Let's say, uh, you know, so you can finish the program in four months, six months. Uh, so far, the companies that we have uh, have been over a year with us, uh, but this is a monthly basis type of program that goes with Milestones. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much, William. No problem. <laughs> Any other question, guys? If there is no other question, I will send this uh, a video. You know, we are recording this session, so. Uh, I can send it to all of you guys. Uh, you will have a copy of this session anytime you can come. But I believe most of the information that I'm providing right now is in the website. You can see everything is in there. Uh, so if you have any questions, just please go to the website. Uh, if you have some specific, very specific questions, you can send us an email. We are very happy to answer your questions. Just be mindful a little bit that we have a big community of startups. We kind of go through different programs and different stages. So because of the limitation of the stuff that we have, that's why we are hiring more people. Uh, we sometimes don't respond right away to your questions. But we try to respond in the 24, 48 hours, most of the time, but we try our best. Uh, so thank you everyone for being here and hopefully we'll see you around in our community at some point, okay? Uh, Thank you, guys. Bye.